testing guys. Hey, listen, a little bit late here. I just want to make sure that the audio video are working properly. Give me a second to make sure that's the case. Hold on one sec. Okay, cool. Sorry about that. Hey, listen, let me know if the audio and video are working correctly. I had a little bit of technical issues getting started, but welcome, welcome to another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live. Let me shut my office door. I'm back. Sorry about that. Hey, listen, welcome back. It's Monday at noon and we're going to do another Freight Broker Bootcamp Live like I do every day Monday at noon. And today we're going to talk about five reasons why women make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. Now, last week I talked about why truck drivers make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. This week we're talking about why women make excellent freight brokers and freight, you know, freight agents. I got this question not long ago through Facebook and I figured I would answer it. Uh, I just want to make sure again, is the sound working good? Audio videos good. You guys can hear and see everything. Just want to double check that um, before we get started. So I'm a little bit uh, combobulated, discombobulated here, but we're going to go off and we're going to do the training. But before we do that, you know, tell me the city and state where you guys are logging in from. Let me know the city and state where you guys are logging in from. I think some people have already started to do it. I'll give some shout outs. If you put the city and state, I'm going to give you a quick shout out again. Uh, the Bill Amer from Portland, Bill from Portland, Oregon, Kimberly from Columbus, Ohio. Welcome. Uh, Notary, Notary Public from Temecula, Temecula, I'm assuming that's California. Uh, Nelson Sanchez from Florida, Winter Haven, Florida. Uh, Juliana from Dallas, Fort Worth area. We've got Elsa. Welcome, Elsa. We got Priscilla from Sacramento, California. We got Chase from Las Vegas. We got Emin Deep, first timer. Uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, we got Elsa from Forest Hills, California. We have Mike Burke from Tampa, Florida. We have, uh, again, we got Cindy Houston from Houston, or Cindy Kane, I'm sorry, from Houston, Texas. Sorry about that, Cindy. We got Eduardo from Las Vegas. We got Val from Santa Clarita, California. We have, uh, what else? Jeez, man, we got a lot of people that are joining me live here. We got Juliana from DFW, Dallas-Fort Worth area. We've got uh, Brown Boy from Orlando, Florida. We got we got Shay from Cartersville, Georgia. Uh, Jana from Vancouver, Cal uh, Canada. We have Harvey from Nebraska. We have Michelle Bradshaw from Michigan. We got people from all over the place. We have uh, Paul Spates from Frisco and Randy from Knoxville, Tennessee. So welcome everybody. Thank you for joining me live. And if you're catching this on replay, make sure you hit me up in the chat box with hashtag replay. I'd love to know who's catching this on replay. Maybe I can reply to you in the comments later. Uh, I know not everybody can make these live. It is the middle of the day and I get it, <clears throat> but it's the best time for me to consistently show up and deliver a training for you guys every Monday at noon. And today I'm going to talk about five reasons why women make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. All right. So that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, um, who wants me to give away a shirt? I'll give away a, another t-shirt. Uh, I've been doing this almost weekly now. This has been a big hit with everybody on the lives. This t-shirt is called Freightpreneur. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. This is a free shirt. I'm going to give it away. Who wants me to give away a free shirt? If you guys want a free shirt, here's all you have to do, all right, or a chance to win a free shirt. I'm going to give one away. You have to be in the United States. I'm not going to ship it all over the world. I'm sorry. But um, if you want this free shirt or you want a chance to win this free shirt during this live, I'm going to give it away during the live. All you have to do is share the stream. So like this post, like it, whether you're on YouTube, like it, whether you're on Facebook, and then share the stream. Click the share button and then share it on social media. If you don't have social, other social media, then send an email to three people that you know with this link, okay? But ultimately, I need you to share the stream and then come back in here and type hashtag shared, hashtag shared, okay? That's all you gotta do. Type in the chat box, hashtag shared. Now, this is an honor system, so I'm trusting that you're telling the truth uh, for uh, the fact that you actually shared the stream. So if you're on Facebook, it's super simple. Just click share and then share it on your stream. Uh, let other people know about the, the weekly training that I do here that's free. 
And then if you're on, uh, on YouTube, do the same thing, right? Just share it on Twitter, share it on Pinterest, share it on Facebook, share it wherever you want to share it. Okay. So if you come in and type hashtag shared after you share it, I'm going to pick one winner of this shirt. Okay. I've been giving these away. They've been super popular and I'll continue to do that as long as you guys want to play along. Okay. So we're going to let some people do that. And then we're going to dive into the training and I will give the, I'll give the shirt away before we go into Q and A, Q and A at the end, where that's a reminder, we are going to do Q and A at the end. We can talk about whatever questions you have about the topic I'm going to cover today, or we can just talk about in general whatever you want to talk about uh, becoming a freight broker or a freight agent. Okay. <clears throat> so for those of you that don't know me, my name is Dennis Brown. I've been an entrepreneur for over 25 years. Been very very blessed. Built three multi million dollar companies in my career. The last one I built, I started in 2003. It was a freight brokerage. I had no experience. Went on to grow that company to over $80 million a year in sales and then sold that company. But I'm also the owner of FreightBrokerBootCamp.com, which is the most cost-effective and comprehensive online freight broker and freight agent training program on the market today. I had that for over 10 years, have trained well over 8,000 students, uh, and we offer a 60-day 100% money-back guarantee. A lot of the people that are on their stream today are probably current or past students of mine. Uh, if you are curious about becoming a freight broker, freight agent, make sure you check that out. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see. We got a, people, a lot of people sharing the stream. That's awesome. Thank you. We will give away the shirt right before the Q&A. So I'm going to go through this quick, short training, and then we're going to go give away the shirt, and then we'll do Q&A. So here we go. Actually, I was wrong. The topic isn't five reasons. It's six reasons why women make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. So let me dive in. I took some notes here to make sure that I covered this thoroughly. And number one on the list is they have emotional intelligence. Now, what exactly is emotional intelligence? Okay. Emotional intelligence, which some, is the ability to understand and manage your own emotions and those around you. The ability to understand your own emotions as well as the people around you, all right? People with a high degree of emotional intelligence, they know what they're feeling, what their emotions mean, and how those emotions can affect other people. Now, there are four, there are five core areas of emotional intelligence. There's self-awareness, there's self-regulation, there's motivation, there's empathy, and then there's social skills, all right? Here's my thoughts. Higher emotional intelligence leads to better decision making, the ability to understand others better and communicate better. So that emotional intelligence skill, it's almost like a skill set, okay? But just a few reasons why I think women make very good freight brokers and freight agents because after all that's what this is all about, right? I got this question recently from a, a user on Facebook and I thought, you know, I've gotten this question before, but I thought it was important, particularly last week I answered the question, why do I think truck drivers make excellent freight brokers? So I shared some specific reasons about them. Today I'm talking about why I believe women can make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. So that was number one, they're emotionally intelligent. Number two, they focus on relationships. Listen, I'm going to give my opinion in this. This is an opinion piece, right? Uh, scientifically, I don't know the proof is, uh, uh, either way, right? I'm not sure about the statistics on it, but here's my experience. My experience is women are better at developing and maintaining relationships. That's just my personal experience throughout my life, personal and business life, okay? And so I believe that that skill translates really well into the freight brokerage business because after all, Business is about relationships. You hear me say it all the time, focus on relationships over transactions. So if you have the ability to develop new and strong relationships with shippers, and you have the ability to develop new and strong relationships with carriers, and you have the ability to develop new and strong relationships with employees and team members, that's going to go a long way into helping you grow faster. So number two is they focus on relationships, all right? Number three, they're not afraid to ask questions, all right? So the willingness to be vulnerable, right? What I see a lot of times is men are not, qu not quite as open sometimes or not quite as willing to be vulnerable about asking questions. We like to know the answers. Women are willing to be much more vulnerable and ask questions. 
And that's important for any entrepreneur, especially freight broker, because it's going to allow you to expedite your learning curve. It's going to allow you to expedite your growth curve, right? If you're trying to, if you're not willing to ask questions or get help from others, then again, you're going to struggle because not everything is intuitive in business. There's things you have to learn. Some things you can learn in advance from others. And some people you have, some things you have to learn the lessons the hard way, right? You make those mistakes and either is good, but the willingness to ask questions and the fact that women are a little bit more open to asking questions, I think goes a long way towards helping them become successful freight brokers or freight agents. Okay. Number four, they are creative. Creativity opens up doors. I'm going to give you a perfect example. I'm not very creative. I'm going to be the first one to admit that. But my wife and both my daughters are super creative and it comes out in different ways. It's not just an artistic creative, although they're, they're all very good at that. Um, creativity opens up doors when it comes to solving problems, identifying new opportunities. And I think creativity helps a lot when you have challenges or obstacles or things that face you in business as a freight broker, and you look at it through the lens of creativity, you have that creativity lens, you have that ability to look at it from a little bit different angle. And I think creativity plays a big role in the success of many top entrepreneurs, all right? So that's number four. Number five, they are patient, right? Patience is a key virtue to any entrepreneur, right? If you're going to be a business owner, whether that be a freight broker or a freight agent, Patience is going to be a key virtue. It's not, you're not going to build a business in a day, a week, or a month, right? So you have to be patient. You have to understand to play the long game. And when I mean the long game, you'd be just surprised how far you can go in 12 or 24 or 36 months. So patience is a really important component. And I believe that women are a little bit more patient, you know, and I think they have that patience to wait. And they don't always need instant gratification. So I think that patience is, a, is an amazing virtue. And I think that it bodes women really well in the entrepreneurial space. And last but not least, number six, they negotiate win-win. Now, what do I mean by that? I think women are better negotiators. And what I mean by better is they don't focus on winning. They don't focus on winning or a one-sided negotiation they probably are a little bit more fair and a win-win. They're a little bit fairer negotiators, right? So I've found in my personal experience that that's been the case. They don't try, to, again, they don't try to win negotiation, you know, which they which implies that someone else is going to lose the negotiation. They, they focus more on win-win solutions. And I promise you that if you negotiate that way as a freight broker or a freight agent with your shippers, with your carriers, with your team member, with your team members, I think it will go a long way to help you expedite your growth of building, starting and building and growing a successful freight broker or freight agency. So those are my six reasons. I thought it was five, but it's actually six. Why I believe women make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. Now, opinions can vary, right? And I'm not plotting men or women. I'm not saying that women are better than men. I'm not saying that men are better than women. What I'm saying is those are six attributes. Those are six reasons why women can make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. But the fact is, is that the industry is dominated numbers wise by men, but I see a lot of women doing extremely well. Perfect example, Monica Gonzalez, who is a good friend of mine. I've known her for well over a decade now, and uh, she's went on to grow an amazing freight agency. She's an agent in the industry, has been for a long time. I did an interview with her not long ago, I think in 2019 or 2020, she earned over $300,000 in commissions in her pocket in that one year. She's just one example. There've been many others that I've worked with throughout my career, whether that be working for me as an agent when I own my brokerage or whether just seeing from afar and meeting through the industry or whether that be people that have joined my training course and then went on to build successful businesses. So Opinions can vary, but those are the reasons why I think women make excellent freight brokers. All right. All right, guys. So listen, thank you very much. I appreciate it. If you're curious about becoming a freight broker or a freight agent, make sure you check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com. Again, we offer a 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. Been in business for over a decade. I promise you won't be disappointed. All right. So let's do some Q and A, but before we do that, let's give away the shirt. 
So I'm going to give one more minute here to anybody that wants to share the stream. If you share the stream, maybe you join me late. I'm going to give away this shirt. It's called Freightpreneur. Someone who solves problems you don't know you have in ways you can't understand. Okay. Uh, I, if you share, if you like this stream, whether it be on Facebook or whether it be on YouTube or wherever it is, and then you share the stream. Okay. If you share the stream I, throughout your network, just hit the share button on, on link or on Facebook. I don't care where you share it somewhere on social, come back in here and type hashtag shared in the comments. I'm going to see those and I'm going to pick one winner. Okay. And I'm going to pick one winner. You've got 30 seconds to do it. So do it really quickly. And then I'm going to randomly pick a winner. Okay. I've been giving these shirts away and shipping them out every week. Again, the only caveat is you have to be in the United States. I'm not going to do international shipping. I mean, this is a $20 shirt, so I'm not going to spend $20 to ship it. It just doesn't make sense. So if you share the stream and then come back here in the, uh, in the, uh, in the comments and type shared, I will include you in the drawing and then we're going to give one away. Okay. So let me grab a quick drink. Hmm. I don't drink coffee, so I had to have a little caffeine this morning. I need a little pep in my step. Ah, so here we go. Let's see what we got. All right, so I'm going to scroll through, and I'm going to see who, who won. Okay, now, if you have already won, I'm going to make a little caveat here. If you've already won a shirt in the past, because I've probably given away a half a dozen or more over the last six months, if you've already won, um, I'm going to have to exclude you from this. It's not that I want to, it's just, I want other people to be able to, to win as well. So I always appreciate you attending live. I always appreciate you sharing the word and spreading anything good about the program, but I'm going to try to, I want to get this shirt into the hands of people who have never had a chance to win. So, all right. So I'm going to scroll through here and I am going to randomly, I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to randomly pick one person. And here we are. Dominic McClue. Dominic McClue. Dominic is the winner of the Freightpreneur shirt. Congrats, Dominic. Dominique, I should say. I'm sorry. Dominique McClue. Pretty obvious from the photo. Her name is Dominique. So congrats, Dominique. Thank you for joining us for the Freight Burger Bootcamp Live. Uh, all you need to do is to message me your name through the through the Freight Burger Bootcamp Facebook page message me with your name, your address, and your size. Um, and then I will ship that out here in the next week. I'm a little bit limited on sizes. I'll let you know if I do have your size or not. I do have some sizes left here and I have to reorder, but ultimately you're the winner of the shirt. Make sure you message me today, like right away. And then I'm going to make sure that goes out. Okay. All right. Congratulations to Dominique and thank you for everybody playing along. So Let's jump into some Q&A. Who's got questions? Who has questions, whether it be about this training or about anything? I'm going to spend maybe the next 15 to maybe maybe 30 minutes, depending upon the questions we get. Who has questions about starting and growing a successful freight broker or freight agency business? All right. Okay, so here's a question. Uh, what's the difference between a freight agent and auto transport legally? Do auto transport agents need more insurance coverage? Now, if you're a freight agent, okay, if you're just a freight agent, you're not going to need any specific insurance coverage. It's not required by law. Um, and if you're a freight agent, that means you're working under a brokerage. Now they may have some insurance, extra insurance if they choose, but typically that's optional too. And that might be, that'd probably be contingent cargo insurance. The primary insurance is always going to be the carrier, whoever the motor carrier is that's hauling the load, they're going to be the primary insurance. So their cargo and liability insurance is going to be number one in line. The reason being is because they're the carrier, they're liable when they take that freight right? When they accept that freight, they accept the liability of that freight. As a freight broker, you don't want to act as a carrier, whether you're hauling, you know, whether you're hauling paper, 
steel or cars. You never want to accept liability as a carrier if you're a broker or an agent. So again, uh, best of my knowledge, you do not. It's, there are no additional insurances that are required as an agent or a broker to, to haul, to head, do carrier hauling or auto hauling. Okay. Um, the carrier, on the other hand, you will need to make sure and vet them and make sure they have the proper authority. You'll also have to make sure they have the proper insurance. Okay. Which is typically a hundred thousand in cargo and a million in BIPD, right? Which is liability. So good question. Thanks for asking. All right, so Sam has a question. Is a fax machine absolutely necessary or will scanning software be sufficient? What is a reasonable expectation for new agent income? All right, one question at a time, Sam. I'll answer your first question. I'm not gonna answer all three, okay? I gotta have time for other people. So is a fax machine absolutely necessary? No, it's not. It's not absolutely necessary. Um, but you will need to be able to fax. You will need, if you're not gonna actually fax, now what you will need to do is if you are, not going to print. So for example, a carrier sends you their, uh, or uh, say you have to sign something, whatever it is, no matter what it is, say you have to sign something. Okay. You're going to need to be able to do some form of digital signature. In most cases with carriers, you're not going to have to sign anything because the, the broker carrier contract you're sending out is already signed in most cases. And so, or unless you have to sign it fresh and you resend it out, but you'll have to digitally sign something if you're not going to actually print it out, but you could scan. So scanning will work, but you're going to need to be able to, um, if you do digital faxing or if you do it via email, that's more than sufficient. You do not need a physical fax machine. Um, now I know a lot of the printers are multifunction, they're printer, scanner, fax. So you can get all three built in. The only difference is you'll need a phone line of some sort. So that does, that is, is some additional cost, but I don't think you're gonna really need an actual physical fax line separate. So I hope that answers your question. All right. Feel free to jump back in and ask questions later if there's no other questions or if you wanna throw those other questions in line but I do want to respect other people's time and give them a chance to answer their questions too. Okay. So here's a question from Elsa. How do I know how to charge lumper fees to shippers? All right. So just so everybody understands what lumper fees are, lumper fees are, is a fee that a shipper will pay to load or unload a truck. Now, not most freight, that you're going to broker does not require a lumper fee. In most cases, uh, the load and unload is a part of the service. Okay. So it's now there's no additional charge, but there are some industries and some companies, and there are times when you're going to have to pay a lumper fee. Now, if a shipper has been shipping into a location, they know whether there's a lumper fee, right? They know whether there's an unload charge. So, Typically what ends up happening is if there is, you have to let the shipper know that if there is a lumper fee, that, that, that is outside of your freight rate. So if you quote a load from point A to point B for a thousand dollars to the shipper, and then the driver shows up and there's a lumper fee for a hundred or $150, that's outside of the freight rate. So it's not inclusive into the freight rate. So what you'll do, typically lumper fees are just a straight pass through. So whatever the cost is, for the driver, because he's going to have to pay the lumper, right? Um, whatever the cost for the driver is, they submit a receipt to you and then you submit that to the shipper and then the shipper pays it. Okay. But you do need to have that conversation with your shipper up front, make sure that they don't have lumper fees or if they do, they're willing to reimburse the actual cost for the lumper fee. So typically the answer to your question is whenever your driver or carrier is charged, whenever they provide a receipt to you for a you know, for a legitimate lumper fee, then you, you can pass that through to your shipper and your shipper should pay that. So I hope that answers your question. All right. So wealth builder, 
all the members of Freight Broker Bootcamp, if you're a paid member of Freight Broker Bootcamp, right, which is my online freight broker and freight agent training program, I have a private members only group for all of those people. And there's tons of collaborations, tons of networking, tons of discussions, lots of people asking questions and getting feedback from everybody. So that's one of the perks and benefits of being a part of the Freight Broker Bootcamp uh, program. So yeah, you can check that out. Again, it's not a free training. It's not a free program. If you are a member of FreightBrokerBootCamp.com, the training, and you're a paid member, you can get access to that group at no additional charge. But it has been extremely valuable. I put that in place. I don't know. It's it's probably, I don't know. I don't know how long ago it is. It's over six months, maybe a year ago. And it's been extremely valuable. I've got a lot of great feedback from that. Okay, so Giuliani asks, who's responsible for paying accessorial fees to the driver, the shipper or the broker? So accessorial fees to the driver are paid by the broker, but they are typically a pass-through to the shipper. So if there's detention fees for a driver, perfect example of an accessorial, if the driver is detained more than two hours or some defined amount of time, typically there's a lump, uh, you know, a detention fee of $50 to $75 an hour for that detention and it goes in 15 minute increments. If that carrier, if that driver carrier bills you for detention, then you are going to typically just pass that through to the shipper. So the shipper is not going to remit payment directly to the carrier or driver for accessorials. It's going to flow through you just like everything else does as a broker. That's your responsibility. You'll consolidate the billing and then you'll bill the shipper and the shipper will pay your freight charges plus your accessorials. Good question. Thanks, Juliana. So here's a question. What kind of license do I need to do container drayage working with a freight forwarder and an owner operator? If you are arranging transportation between a shipper and a carrier, you are identified as a broker. If you are a broker, you are required to have a freight broker authority. So you will have to get licensed by the FMCSA. It's not a difficult process. It's not an expensive process. The application is only 300 bucks. Uh, you have to get a freight broker bond. So there are things you need to do in order to become a freight broker, but they're pretty basic. But if you are arranging transport between a shipper and a carrier, you will need a broker license. And a freight forwarder is actually a shipper, right? So if they're controlling and taking possession of the goods as a freight forwarder, they're considered a shipper. Now, they're not a manufacturer. They're not a distributor. They're not an importer or exporter, but they are considered a shipper. So regardless whether you're going direct to a shipper or working with a freight forwarder, you will need a freight broker license to help arrange that transportation if you are going to be compensated. What's the name of the surety bond that I need to get today, right now? Special lines or surplus lines? Yeah, so the, the surety bond is a freight broker surety bond. It's called a freight broker surety bond. So I don't know about uh, special lines or surplus lines. I'm not quite sure. But I know that if you reach out to a surety bond company that specializes in freight broker bonds, they're going to take care of the whole process for you. Your your freight broker bond cost is going to be determined by your credit, um, as well as some other variables, but heavily on your credit. And um, and so yeah, so that will definitely help. I hope that makes sense. All right, I'm scrolling through. Just give me a minute to find questions. Okay, so here's a question from R Mac. Hi, I'm in the business. I'm in the process of getting my authority active for my brokerage. Can you talk a little bit about building a sales process? Okay, so the sales process for a freight broker or freight agent is relatively simple. Number one, you need to identify your niche. What is your niche? Number two, you need to make a list 
of potential customers or prospects or leads that you can then contact as a part of that niche. Whether you have 500 or 1,000 or 5,000 of them, you make a list of name, you know, phone number, website address, email that you can find, right? So you're going to get a list of those. And then at that point, and you can find those online um, or you can purchase them or you can just use Google or LinkedIn, right? So there's a lot of resources to find the list. And then from there, you're going to need to do outreach, right? So outreach usually comes in one of three forms. You either do it through the phone, which is a cold call. You do it through email, which is a cold email, or you do it through social media, which is an outreach through social media like LinkedIn or Twitter, okay? So at that point, once you've done some basic outreach, your goal with that outreach is not to sell your service. Your goal with that outreach is to start a dialogue, right? Is to start a communications and have an opportunity to potentially do business with them later. So it's not a one call close. It's not a, you know, it's not... Um, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, where you're beating them over the head with your pitch, right? The focus is develop a relationship based on identifying the challenges and needs that that specific niche has. And then from there, you're going to, um, you're going to potentially, once you, you've qualified them and they've qualified you, you're going to potentially provide some freight rates, right? They're going to give you some lanes, some things that they run based on equipment and geography and the different lanes that they run. You're going to provide some freight rates. You're going to negotiate those rates. Then eventually they're going to tender the, a load to you, an opportunity to move a load. And then at that point you need to move that load, right? So that's the basic sales process, right? There's a lot that goes into that, right? There's a lot that goes into that, but that's the basic framework of how a new freight broker or freight agent would uh, start navigating that sales process to start getting new shippers so that they could start growing their sales. Thanks for asking. Okay, so here's a question. Can you be denied a surety bond because of bad credit? Yes, you can. If you have really bad credit, you may not qualify for a surety bond or the cost may be very prohibitively high. Now, when I say bad credit, you know, bad credit is subjective. If you have a 500 credit score, that is bad credit. But is 600 a bad credit? Is 650 a bad credit? Where does it become good credit? Don't try to judge your own credit, right? If you have a bankruptcy from three months ago or something, of course, you're going to have some credit challenges right now. But ultimately, if you go to a uh, freight broker bonding company, they're going to tell you whether you're going to be able to get it and what the costs are. Now, here's the good news. Um, the costs on average range, range between 2 to 5% of the bond cost. So it's a $75,000 bond, which means the typical cost is somewhere between $1,500 and say $3,700 annually for the bond. So it's not a huge cost, right? And again, that's not all paid up front. That's an annual premium. So that's the bond cost. But let's say, for example, you can't afford it or you can't qualify for a freight broker bond. What you really need to do is focus on becoming a freight broker agent, become a freight agent. Now, a freight agent is someone that works under a licensed freight broker, but is an independent contractor and a business owner that's on a straight commission basis. And they get paid a heavy commission, typically between 50 and 70% of the profit goes to the agent. So if you moved a load from point A to point B, you, you charge the shipper a thousand, you paid the carrier 800, you made a $200 margin on that load. That means the 50 to 70% commission you would get would be somewhere between $100 and $140 on that one load. So let's say, for example, you did just 10 loads in a week, right? 10 loads in a week at $100 average profit per load as an agent, right? Because you're making 200 margin, you get 50% of that, you make 100 on that load. That's a thousand bucks a week working from home as a freight agent. You have no risk because you don't have to have your bond, you don't have to have your authority, you're not responsible for, you know, you just typically don't have the liability issues or responsibilities, you know, you don't have to pay the carriers, you don't have to pay for the technology, you don't have to do any of that, right? So starting as a freight agent is a great way to get started. As a matter of fact, for people that don't have a lot of experience in the industry, I recommend starting as a freight agent. Because here's the reality, you've probably heard me say it before, if you can't make money as a freight agent, with extremely low startup costs and very low risk, right? And very low barrier to entry, you're not going to make money as a freight broker. So it's a great place to start. And then from there, once you start getting some customers, 
right? And you start getting comfortable and your feet are wet and you start understanding what's going on in the industry and you get your legs about you, you can always convert to a freight broker. Maybe your credit will be better by then. Maybe cash flow will be better by then. And then you just simply convert from an agent to a broker. And at that point, now you hit your end goal, but you just did it in two steps rather than one. So there's nothing wrong with starting as a freight agent. If for any reason you can't start as a freight broker. Good question. Thank you. So how before you establish your biz credit for credit scoring? Well, it's hard to, this is a question from Mickey. It's hard to establish credit before you have a business, right? As a business, right? So you can set your corporation up. And if you want to try to start establishing some sort of credit, you can do that. But the credit that factoring companies are going to be looking at and carriers are going to be looking at is how you pay your freight bills, not if you have a loan with a bank right? So they specifically look at how quickly you pay your freight bill. So the only way to build credit around and build a history of paying freight bills is to start paying freight bills, right? So I don't think there's any sort of a, a hack there. Um, you might be able to try if you have an existing corporation that you've done business and you have some, you've established some sort of credit, maybe you could do that. Maybe you could reach out to some carriers and establish some sort of credit and start using them, you know, beforehand. But ultimately, um, if you're really going to grow the business, you know, you, you're going to have to build that credit on the fly. You're going to earn as you learn. And so I think, you know, people make a really big deal about this, but I'm going to tell you, most carriers will run with a new broker for one load right? And, and even factoring companies will for one load. Now, are they going to run up 10 or 15 or $20,000 worth of credit with a new broker? Probably not. There are going to be some companies that are going to refuse you, but ultimately you got to remember there's hundreds of thousands of trucking companies out there. So you have options. Okay. So I know it can be a little bit challenging getting started, but people do it every single day. And some people don't run into any issues and others let that become an obstacle that holds them back from pursuing their dreams and building a real business. All right, so I'm scrolling through the questions here. Okay, so real quick, uh, can you break down what a surety bond is and how to get your surety bond? All right, so I'm gonna do this very simply. A surety bond is, is a bond that guarantees payments two carriers from brokers. So the reason why freight brokers are required to have a surety bond has nothing to do with the shippers, has nothing to do with cargo claims. It has nothing to do with any sort of claims. What it has to do with is it guarantees carriers that they are going to get paid because the surety bond company is ensuring that you will get paid. So a surety bond is almost like an insurance policy to carriers to make sure they get paid. Okay. So what happens is let's say a broker, uh, you know, does load, does a load and has a sh carrier haul a load. And then for whatever reason, they don't pay them, right? They forget to pay them or they just don't have the money and they don't pay them or whatever the case may be. That carrier can go to the surety bond company, which is the name and address and phone number and everything is listed on the surety bond. They can reach out to that surety bond company. They can file a claim and they can get paid for their services. Okay. So that surety bond company guarantees payments to the carriers, right? That's the reason why years ago they increased it from $10,000 surety bond to $75,000 surety bond. The reason being was because 10,000 wasn't enough uh, of, a, of a buffer and 75,000 obviously gave carriers a lot more room to recover the funds and for whatever reason that they did not get paid. So the way to get your surety bond is simply reach out to a company that specializes in freight broker surety bond complete their application. And at that point, they're going to, they're going to approve you at a certain rate or whatever the case may be. They're going to go through the approval process. And at that point you have your surety bond. You do not need to get your surety bond before you file for the FMCSA. So you would file your FMCSA licensing application first for your freight broker authority through the FMCSA. And then you're going to have time 
to submit your surety bond because you're going to need an MC number and you're going to need some basic information in order to get your surety bond approved. Okay. So I hope that helps. All right, I'm scrolling through questions. Give me a minute. So Dov Sauer asked, hi, Dennis, I'm a student. How do I know I can count on the processing agent for the BOC3? Do you recommend any companies? I don't recommend any companies because they, you know, it's just, it, it's such an inconsequential thing. The BOC3, all you need to do is make sure, just vet them like you would vet any other vendor. If they're a brand new startup, I probably wouldn't do business with them. But if they've been around for years, like most of the processing agents have, then you're probably not going to have an issue. So when you reach out to them and ask them, just ask them how long they've been in business. If they've been in business for an established amount of time, great. You could also do a Google search and find out if they've got any bad reviews or they've got anybody telling any really bad stories about them. But ultimately the processing agent is really only in the, in the event that there's some sort of legal issue. Um, you know, typically that's the only reason why a processing agent is going to be utilized, right? If there's some sort of legal issue within that state, uh, and they need to for they'll need to forward that information to the corporate office or whatever it is. So yeah, I wouldn't worry about it too much, but you could do some basic vetting on the phone with them. You could do a little bit of vetting through Google, but I really don't think you're going to have any issues. Okay, so uh, in Freight Broker Bootcamp, is, the question is, are broker contracts in the Freight Broker course legitimate for use to obtain business from the shipper carriers? Okay, so in Freight Broker Bootcamp, we offer a freight broker, we offer a broker shipper agreement, broker carrier agreement, broker agent agreement. Now, those are baseline templates that you can use to build your own contracts. Now, those, I, I cannot give you legal advice, okay? And I'm not, and I'm not here to guarantee that those contracts cover all the caveats of business that you would want to cover. Okay. I, I don't give legal advice. I'm not a lawyer. Those are a good foundation for you to build upon the contract. I would always recommend any business owner to seek legal advice when it has to do with legal advice, right? Because again, I'm not a lawyer, but they cover the, they cover the, the known issues that uh, brokers need to cover in any sort of a contract, particularly as a broker carrier contract, because that's what you're going to use most often but you would always want to take a closer look at that and customize that. Okay. So always recommend whether it's financial or legal advice, you always seek some sort of assistance from, from an expert that's in that ring. I'm not a lawyer and I don't play one on TV, so I don't try to pretend to be. Okay. So Kimberly has a good question. At what point in time is it important to consider a website? Well, you know, it's a really good question. My answer to that is this, as soon as you can afford a website, you should get one. And here's why. It's not an absolute must, but is a strong optional cost that you should consider investing in if you have the money. Now, most websites you're going to be able to set, if you're a part of Freight Broker Bootcamp, um, we offer templates, webs of WordPress templates and an entire process on how you can get your website set up for 50 or hundred bucks. So it's really not a super costly uh, investment, but if you're not in Freight Broker Bootcamp, you should still be able to get a basic website set up for, you know, 500 to a thousand bucks, right? So as soon as you can afford a website, you should set one up. And the biggest reason why is because it builds your credibility, right? And it reinforces the fact that you're a real business. When you call somebody on the phone, right? If I were to call you on the phone and say that I was Dennis Brown with XYZ Logistics, one of the first things you're probably going to do either on the call or after the call is to Google me. And if I Google, if you Googled me and you didn't find Dennis Brown at XYZ Logistics, that's going to be a big red flag. It's going to be a huge red flag. 
So my suggestion is get your website set up as quickly as you can afford. If that's day one, great. If that's month one, great. But I also know brokers who have built successful businesses who didn't have a website at all or had a really lousy website. So it's not an absolute must, but it is a strong and powerful tool to help build trust and credibility, which is one of the biggest challenges that every startup has, no matter what industry they're in. So I hope that helps. Yeah, Armac, um, I'm sorry, but I'm, I'm just not taking on any consulting or coaching clients right now. Um, you know, just way too busy. You know, I do have an annual coaching program that I've worked, that I've done in the past, that annual coaching program. It's a $30,000 annual program. Um, and I typically only work with experienced freight brokers and freight agents who already have an established business that are looking to grow. Maybe they're doing a half a million or a million dollars a year and they want to go to two or three or 5 million. Those are the types of clients I typically work with. Um, but I'm not taking on any new consulting or coaching clients right now. If I decide to do that in the future, I will email my list. I'll let everybody know because if I do that, I'll, ha I'll only have a few slots probably. Um, but that's currently where I am with coaching and consulting. Thank you for the kind words, Wealth Builder. Thank you so much. I appreciate the kind words. Thank you. All right, so I'm scrolling through. I'm going to ask her a couple more questions here, okay? Okay, so if you are going to be a carrier or a broker, the place that you are going to get your MC number is through the FMCSA. If you search FMCSA motor carrier or the FMCSA freight broker, you're going to find their website. That's where you will submit your, your application for your carrier or your broker authority. So that's where you actually, that's the licensing body where you are going to get your carrier broker authority. Um, Wealth Builder says, my brother is a carrier for now, so I don't need my broker, my surety bond yet. No, that's not true. Just because your brother is a carrier, if you're going to be brokering freight, you need to get your freight broker authority. And if you're going to get your freight broker authority, then you are going to, um, then you're going to need your freight broker bond, your surety bond. Now, if you're just working under him as a carrier, if you're operating as a carrier and you're just moving his trucks, then you're probably not going to have to do that. Maybe you're an employee or dispatcher under him. You may not have to do that. But if you are going to be contacting shippers and you are going to be brokering loads to trucks that are not under him, then you're definitely going to need a broker authority, which requires you to have your broker bond. So I just want to make sure that's clear. Okay. So here, how do you find work under a broker? I'm considering freight agent for now. Okay, great. So here's what I'm going to say. Go to my blog, freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog. And there's a search bar there. And in the search bar, I want you to type get hired. And if you search, you're going to find a blog post and a video that goes into very granular detail on exactly how to get hired as a freight broker or a freight agent with no experience or customers. If you follow that process, you will get hired. Now, if you follow that process and you only call one broker, there's a good chance you're not getting hired. If you follow that process and you call two brokers, there's a good chance you're not going to get hired. But if you follow that process and you call 10 or 20 or 30 or 50 brokers and you follow that process, I can almost guarantee you'll get hired. How do I know? Because anybody who's ever actually done it has always got hired as a freight agent. But you got to follow that process. So go to freightbrokerbootcamp.com forward slash blog and in the search bar, type get hired. It'll pull up a blog post and a video training that'll show you exactly. It's going to be very hard for me to do justice here. I think you're going to get a lot more information and a lot more value if you just go to the website and check it out because that's a very common question that I get.
Okay, so I'm going to put it in the chat box. Here is correct FMCSA website for brokers. All right, so I just put it in the chat box. Uh, and that went on Facebook. It did not go on YouTube. So uh, the only way I can post is through Facebook. It doesn't post comments automatically to YouTube. So you guys can check that out. Okay. So that is the correct website for freight brokers for the FMCSA. All right, guys. So listen, I'm going to wrap it up for today. Uh, congratulations to Dominique for the shirt. Make sure you message me your name, address, and size so that I can get this out to you this week. Thank you everybody else for joining me live. I truly appreciate you guys being here. I hope you got great value out of the training today. Six reasons why women make excellent freight brokers and freight agents. And I mean it from the heart. I truly mean it. When I had my freight brokerage, I hired a lot of women for these exact same reasons, right? Whether I hired them as employees or whether I hired them as agents. Um, I think that this is just six of many other reasons why women can make very excellent entrepreneurs, freight brokers, and freight agents. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you share the stream. Make sure you like the stream. And most importantly, if you're curious about getting started as a freight broker, freight agent, check out freightbrokerbootcamp.com, 60 day, 100% money back guarantee. And make sure last but not least that you show up next week, Monday at noon for another freight broker bootcamp live. Have an awesome day. We'll talk to you soon.